Just a quick note before we get going, we will be on Your View, Channel 4 in Southern California in the San Diego Legion region, if you will. And some of the uh, Spectrum Channel 4 outlets will have that as well. Every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Pacific time, Rugby Wrap-Up will be on those channels. And we'll have exclusives with members of the San Diego Legion, including this week's exclusive with head coach Danny Lee. So look for that there or on RugbyWrapUp.com. Next on Rugby Wrap-Up's Major League Rugby show, Atlanta star Johan Momsen, a mystery guest. Plus, highlights, opinions, and previews with Dan Power, Brian Ray, and Matt McCarthy. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump. And Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City. Dan Power, looks, it looks like he's in Hoboken, and Brian Ray looks to be in Quincy, Massachusetts. Gentlemen, welcome back, and we have to fly through this because we have a mystery guest waiting in the waiting room to come on, a very special mystery guest. So let's fly through last week. Austin knocked off Atlanta 29-14. Brian, we didn't see this, or did we? Well, pretty obvious. Austin was pretty beat up after the game against L.A. ATL just dominated up front, so a strong win at home for the Rattlers. And ATL, or Austin, rather, losing their unbeaten uh, run. Yeah, it's tough. Obviously, unbeaten in MLR. We haven't seen a team run the table. We haven't seen our Miami Dolphins yet, right? So not happening this year as well. Uh, for me, the big change, I actually switched my pick over in the Super Brew League. Get on there, rugby wrap-up. Uh, to Atlanta when I saw Isaac Ross was out. I just felt like the set piece with Atlanta. They got some great jumping locks and no Isaac Ross to kind of counteract that. So uh, not surprised Atlanta at home. It's been a tough spot to play, Silverback Park. So doing good there. The next one, New England beat Toronto, Brian. Yeah, a little bit of magic from uh, Bonin Walker to start the game and then about five arrows missing a tackle on Slade McDowell. Some other bad decisions by the arrows. So sadly, just came up short in uh, some pretty lousy weather in uh, New England. Off-target arrows, Dan. Yeah, obviously the bye wasn't good. Uh, the weather wasn't good. Boating Walker was incredibly good yet again. Uh, shout out to the, the Free Jacks fans too. Turned up in absolutely deplorable uh, conditions there. I think they had a sellout. And obviously, when the weather turned, a lot didn't come, but a lot still did. So, credit to those fans up there. Used to tough weather. So, go Free Jacks. Wicked tough fans. And Mike Petrie was seen weeping. He was a sideline reporter weeping in the arms of Woodsy Church trying to stay warm. But you got to credit the Arrows. They did come back and get that bonus point, which could be a big thing at the end of the year. We don't know. So, they fought back. They got the try at death. And kudos to the Arrows, who played on the road again which is just ridiculous. They, can play, they can't play in the snow in, in Toronto? I don't know. I think they can. Next one, Dallas hosting New Orleans. New Orleans blew them out of the stadium, didn't they, Brian? Yeah, not quite. This was so close. I actually thought Dallas was going to come back and win this game. Uh, really exciting match. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to see that Dallas is doing better. They're still working on that scrum, but I hear uh, through the grapevine that there is a new prop on the way to Dallas as we speak. So look for that name maybe uh, to show up on their lineup pretty soon. Good game. I had Nola by 23, and I turned the game off when they were up by 21, thinking they're gonna, they'll are gonna knock this one out of the park. And then I get a, a random text saying, well, Dallas looks like they're going to win this, and I had to quickly turn the game on to catch the end there, and Nola hold on. But, boy, Dallas, they're going to squeak one out here, Matthew, soon. I can feel it. The next one up, Houston versus Seattle. This is one we couldn't really figure who's, who's what team was what. Brian Houston ended up as the last one standing. Yeah, and I think uh, the right team won, even though I thought uh, Seattle was a little bit hard done by on the one that Dylan Smith, the big Danny Barrett breakout try. I think Pono Davis was actually offside and messed up that call. But I, I still thought Houston was a better team in that game. They just fronted up in the pack and really uh, beat up uh, Seattle a bit there. And Seattle, all their momentum came from the outside backs of Cepho and Matthews, and they just uh, couldn't get it done. And Dan, you said Danny Barrett was washed up to me off camera, and here he is showing you up. Oh, I, I meant that he'd washed up like in the shower and like soap and everything. And oh, still a fantastic. My bad. Play. Just kidding, Danny. Yes, a tough loss for, for the Sea Wolves who had their chances, had their chances, and it didn't happen. Big win for the, the, the Sabercats, but an important point again for Seattle in that bonus point column. 
Then we had New York versus San Diego. The wind was blowing sideways. The cold air was in. It was 27 degrees at kickoff time. And the wind chill factor made it like 26 degrees. The wind was big. It, it played what we thought was going to be a big part in the game. But you had two very good kickers. I think that was San Diego's best game of the season. And they lost, which is the funny part. I thought I thought a draw would have been fair. Both teams fronted up. Really entertaining, exciting game. Nate Augsburger, of all the players, to take that penalty at the end. Jack Hyten, uh, nerves of steel, knocking over that penalty. Uh, just an entertaining game. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we got that spectacle on that. Uh, yeah, it was just fun to watch. And, you know, this, this matchup, maybe we'll see it down the line. Kickers live for moments like that. In, in the words of my uh, great friend, Russell Crowe, a.k.a. Maximus, are you not entertained? Yeah. Are you not entertained? That's You can't get a better finish to a game than that. In those conditions, he slots it. Uh, great scenes again. And New York. They get it out. A quick shout out to my mate Sam Windsor. Didn't play on the weekend, but if he comes back and starts this week, first player to get 50 starts in Major League Rugby. So I think we've had two with 50 caps, but this will be the first player to 50 starts in MLR. So good job, Sammy. Finally, we had the LA Giltinis rebounding and smashing the Utah Warriors. Right, Brian? Yeah, if only. It certainly looked that way in the first half, except that L.A. forgot they had to score points. Uh, unbelievable. I don't know how, uh, you know, Utah was in that game by halftime. They had, you know, almost no possession. Second half, a couple of tries late in the game, and boom, L.A. is all of a sudden 2-3 and three this season. So uh, pretty good win, a resilient performance, a defiant performance from Utah in L.A. Yeah, I don't know what to make of L.A. They just look flat. They look tired. The championship hangover is extended into this season uh they're missing missing some direction i don't know if a almost 40 year old matt gitto is the answer to replace a 44 year old or ie but anything is going to be better than what they've got out there now they just seem a little rudderless and a little flat yeah they're banged up you know they haven't had i, I think corbacero coming out uh, you know making that announcement that he's finally going to get in the front row give him some some uh pizzazz and some some more of that je ne sais quoi that they're missing but other than that, unless they get some bodies back and get a younger fly half that's capable, that they can trust, they might lose again. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll bring in our mystery guest after this. Selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle, and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at she And we are back with Dan Power, Brian Ray, and our mystery guest. That's right, it's that time again for our mystery guest, and we're going to get right to it with three hints for these guys, and then they can start picking. They have three questions each, and then we'll just tell them who it is if they don't get it. Uh, Your hints are, he is a player, he is not a fly half or a hooker, and he's somewhat musically inclined. Uh, did you play this past weekend in Major League Rugby? Yeah, mate. Oh, okay. You uh Eastern Conference player? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you playing a home game this past weekend? That's right. Home game. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a jandal or a thong? Jandal. <laughs> That's a good, good one, Dan. Good one. We're educating the audience. Brian. Are are you a player for Rugby ATL? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Dan, can you take, can you land this baby, Dan? I got to hand the, uh, the stick back to Brian Ray. I think he's got it. I, I, I got in there, but he's got it. Are you a, are you a back? No. Nah. Uh, are you a second row? Sometimes. Uh, did you play in the championship last year? Yes. Uh, mystery guest, have you been known to sing? Yep. <sighs> Man. Connor Cook? Not me. Not him. Dan, don't get... Dan, stop scrolling through the lineup. You're on camera, Dan. We can see no. you cheating. Have you and I met in person? Yep. Yeah. Six foot five. 
of twisted steel and sex appeal, weighing in at 113 kilograms. This is Johan Momsen. Are you Johan Momsen? That's me, sir. Oh, the circle gets the square, and here comes Johan Momsen. There he is, our mystery guest, and ding, 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 Dan Power finally gets off the schneid and gets the correct call. Brian, you, you, you did some of the heavy lifting there, but uh, unfortunately... Uh, Johan got me with the accent. Nailed it. <laughs> Let's get down to the obvious. The, the undefeated Austin Gilgronies came into Atlanta. They were going to leave with their perfect record intact because nobody could beat them, and you guys smoked them. Smoked them. Yeah, it was a really good one for us. Uh, talking about making a statement, right? So, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, we started off well, um, had that one slip up against New York, but uh, it's all about consistency for us now. And uh, yeah, I think getting on the right track now. So exciting, exciting times ahead. Yeah, all the, all the off-pitch turmoil before the season started, they're going to fall apart without this and that, and, the, and you guys just haven't missed a beat. Yeah, I mean, not not too much changed. Uh, there was a lot of lot of ups and downs for us in that preseason, but uh, squad consistency has been there. And I mean, same two coaches, really, without Coach Lawrence, uh, but uh, same two coaches keep keeps on doing the same thing. So not too much has changed, really. Hey, obviously unfinished business from from last year, mate. Uh, championship out there against LA just just wasn't Atlanta's day, right? These things happen. Was that a lot of fuel for you to come back to Major League Rugby for 2022? And then what's different this year for ATL? How do you go that one last step to, to lift up the uh, the shield? Look, yeah, definitely a good reason to come back. Um, one of the main things that probably drove me here. But uh, uh, that one last step is really just like I said, the consistency and getting that all through the squad. And uh, when we do squad rotations, getting everyone on the same page week in, week out. Um, and yeah, just keep doing what we're doing all the way to the end. I think uh, maybe peaked in the conference final last year. Didn't get to the final, all prepped up really well, but uh, we learned from it and uh, we'll get back stronger. Hopefully, hopefully this year we'll get out there again and snatch it this time. You know, Johan, I wanted to ask you, you what, what's the difference between the Curry Cup, Curry Cup competition back in your native South Africa and Major League Rugby as you've seen it grow so far? Are you, you know, telling guys to come over or, or people asking you what it's like? Definitely, um, and a lot of a lot of interest. To be honest, uh, it's definitely growing, growing fast. Uh, lots of opportunities. Um, I mean, hopefully, there's more teams in the future that'll expand it and uh, just bring up more opportunities for local and international players. But yeah, the talk back there is a lot about what's going on here and uh, a lot of excitement and people trying to get in. Um, trying to experience it it's a big outside of rugby it's also cool uh, everyone knows about how big the states are and wanting to experience it uh and i mean easy in through rugby um so yeah it's great stuff well you, you kind of uh you know threw me off with that question in the beginning so i'm going to ask you you know you, you played a fair bit of number eight in south africa here you kind of mostly in the second row do you have a preference which position you're at um, it really depends on what system the team plays. Um, some teams play in a system where you're one of the second rows does play out in the channels or some systems where your eight plays in the center field. So really, I just like playing in the center field, being in the thick of things, cleaning the rucks, making the hard carries. Um, kind of don't prefer running onto backs. I don't know why, but... Uh, you can't. You they, cannot prefer playing lock to number eight. Let's be, let's be real here. I, if the eight plays in the wide channels, I still prefer play, being in the middle with the All second right. row. So, yeah, it's, I, it's that's just, what I makes guess. you you. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that's my preference, depending on where we play in the system, really. And, and before I give Dan his final question, tell us about your singing. Uh, I guess my mom's a music teacher, um, so it's been in the family forever. I was a big choir boy in school. Uh, when I went back home now, I joined my sister singing in the choir in the off time. So, yeah, it's something I like to do in my off time. It's good. I, I would pay good money to see you singing. 
Maybe at maybe at the the after the the team dinner. Maybe we get that going. I'm we'll telling you right tell. now, we got to get that I'll going. Some, I'll I'll bring one of my caps and you can put some daughters in there. <laughs> which <laughs> it might take you forever to pick which one was your favorite. But Dan, final question for Mister Momsen. All right, mate. You mentioned uh, Scott stepping away. Breddy steps into the role of head coach. You couldn't have two different personalities. Scott Lawrence wakes up at five to work out. Stephen Brett walks in the house at five, usually uh, from a night out. How's your relationship? Oh, that's that's just conjecture and alleged just silliness, ladies and gentlemen. Save your uh, letters. I have the photos. But anyway. <laughs> Double it down, Dan. Like, and how's the dynamic change? Because obviously, personality-wise, you couldn't find two different people. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think Coach Scott, he was kind of like you say that scary vibe. Um, it's it's you 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 respect him, and everyone is trading lightly uh, around him. So discipline is never a problem really when it gets around him. So it was de definitely something we, especially as a leadership group, had to talk about with the coaches: is how are we going to double down on that? How are we going to share responsibilities around who's going to take care of what? Um, but I mean, we've uh, everyone's just assumed a little bit more responsibility on themselves, um, and it, it's working. It's working. It's all all's going well. So no, no problem really. I, I got one more question for you. You got a lot of wacky hairstyles on the team. Are, are you thinking of doing something nutty, or is it? Is it you, you seem you you look you look too normal actually. Uh, I mean, I think I'm just this is me. Uh, just, if my hair gets a little longer than this, I cut it. That's just how it's been. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, it's working. It's working, yeah. it's working for you, brother. It's working for you. Hey, how do you feel about War Machine, the old axe murderer, going to Houston? Uh, huh? I was just happy for, <laughs> happy for the man, so you can get some game time again. But it's sad to lose the partner. Hey, eh? really sad. You're to gonna smash it. Oh, I wish we could play him again. Yeah, we play them now, but hopefully we get them somewhere in the playoffs and we get a target on his head. Yeah, because last year after the final, you were telling me that if we didn't have him, the dead weight, if he was gone, you would have beaten LA. And now you finally got rid of him. Now's your chance to smash him. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember that. <laughs> Throw me under the bus here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join you. I'll join you. I love you. Uh, all right. Throw him under the bus, Dan, they call him. <laughs> All right. Cheers, brother. Thank you very much, Mr. Momsen. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman. Riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we are back. Dan Power, Brian Ray, Matt McCarthy. How great was that? We got our games ahead of us. First one up, Brian, Utah, hosting your Arrows. And since you're such a Toronto fan, let's go to Dan. I really like what I saw from Utah on the weekend, Matthew. They looked really good there in the Coliseum, extracting a little bit of revenge from the Western Conference Championship last year. I think they'll continue. I don't know. Just didn't get enough from the Arrows there. Sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. I'm going to go Utah here. Arrows have won in Utah before. I'll I'm go big, with Toronto right? in an upset. All right, but you know what? The travel doesn't get easier for Toronto. That was a quick trip to Boston from Toronto, allegedly. And now they're going out to Utah with the altitude in the snow. And they'll probably be playing in snow again because the Arrows only play in snow on the road because, again, they can't play at home, right? Can't play at home. So – I think it's going to be tough. I think the Arrows are going to try to pull whatever they can out of their quiver, but it's not going to be enough, and I think Utah is going to win that one by at least six points. I got L.A. next versus San Diego. This is probably a must-win for L.A., and maybe not so much for San Diego, but San Diego looked, looked good and is getting healthier this week. Brian. Yeah, and a sh much shorter trip for them. Uh, geez, they look good against New York. I think they'll enjoy a little bit of sleep and less travel. L.A. looks pretty banged up. Doesn't sound like they're getting Gitto back this week. So, 
You know what? Uh, momentum's with San Diego, I think. i got to go with the Legion. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Brian here. It's crazy to think that we're, we're picking against LA this early in the season as they defend their title. But uh, I, I agree. San Diego, I thought, looked really strong against New York. LA just, like I said, looked a little lost against Utah. Had opportunities, couldn't do much with it. Um, San Diego, Joe Peterson pulling the strings. I like it. I, you know what really surprised me was Lutz and Freire, and I'm probably saying his name incorrectly again, Freire, Freire, he wants me to roll the R's, and I'm Freire. But, you know, these guys, they're not the biggest guys on the planet, but they play hard, and they play 80 minutes hard. They run downhill. They're all over the pitch. They, they, they really impressed me. It's the whole San Diego team impressed me. I think they're going to beat L.A. at the Coliseum. The cohorts go into the Coliseum and win that one. The next one up, New Orleans on a two-game win streak, Brian, hosting New York. What do you make of this? Uh, you know what? Uh, Nola got the win, but they didn't look too hot against Dallas, if we're being honest. And New York uh, just, you know, hammered out a win against San Diego. I just picked San Diego. Got to go with New York on the road. Daniel. Yep, same again as my astute Canadian friend, Brian Ray. Uh, New York for real. They're a title contender. Nola, uh, it's a rebuilding year. They're looking to put some pieces uh, back in their puzzle, maybe for 2023, but I'll go New York on the road here. I'm going to make it uh, three for three. I'm going to say the gold comes in silver in this matchup, and it's going to be New York that wins. They come in first in this particular match. Then the next one up, the Jackals. Welcome in the Seawolves into the Jackals' den. Brian. This is a lot tougher to pick than it was uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. Seattle didn't look great against Houston. They've lost three in a row. Uh, you know, I, I I'd be interested to see what lineup Dallas is. If they've got this new prop that's coming in, if they got Henry Trinder back, I think there's a question. Maybe maybe, maybe they can sneak this one. But man, do I pick Dallas? You know what? I'm going to take a punt on this and go with Dallas with the upset just to see what happens. All right. Okay. Uh, I think he's been sipping too much whale blubber oil up there, uh, Dan. What do you think? Give me some of that because I was going to do the exact same thing. I'm Whoa. Like, Whoa. This is the banana peel game. This is this is Dallas's breakthrough. The Jackals will record their franchise first victory this weekend. Se Seattle looked broken. They, something's going on up there, man. Something's wrong in the Pacific Northwest, man. No. I don't know what it is. No, Houston is better than Dallas, and Seattle was on the road, and Seattle has better personnel, and Seattle is going to win this game by 10 points. The next one, Austin, this one. Oh, you got to circle this one, folks. Austin hosting New England. New England, who just keeps getting ignored and disrespected by us pundits, except for Dan. So, Dan, let Brian start. I do believe that I was the only one who picked New England to beat uh, New York, by the way. Uh, I, I love this game. Yeah, all this right, you got be, one uh, right <laughs> on, the, on the season, okay? <laughs> this is, uh, is going to be a thriller. Uh, you know, Austin look a little bit beat up. Is Isaac Ross going to come back for this one? I love how the Free Jacks are playing right now. Bowden Walker is on fire. I'm picking another on-the-road upset New England to get the win. Daniel Gilgroniak. Is this the, the thriller? No, it's in, I was going to say the thriller in Quinzilla, but it's not. It's in Austin, so that oh, ruins my rhyming. Uh, Austin back at home, coming off a loss. Need some players back. If they don't have a roster that is somewhat similar to what they had two, three weeks ago, I think New England rolls them here. That's a fast track in Bold Stadium, and Bodine Walker has made people look silly on, uh, on bad conditions. You put him on a dry, fast track, and boy, oh, boy, uh, Austin could be in for a long night trying to contain him. He is the hottest commodity in MLR right now. Absolutely. Turning games single-handedly. So um, I'm the OG Gilgroniak. Contractually, I am obligated to pick them. But uh, take the Lamborghini back, Gilly. I'm going to New England. Whoa, again. whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. Dan yep. Power. Yep. Wow. There it is. Not towing the company line. And I agree with you, too. I'm going with the Free Jacks. The FJs, the Quincy Jacks, whatever you want to call them. How about that, Jacks Rangers? Put that in your pipe and smoke, and I'm picking New England this week. And, Brian, I, I still got a couple of things to say to you about 
you know, going along with him when he's taking me down on his show, okay? But that's for another story. Old Glory hosting Atlanta. Could this be the one where Old Glory gets the win, Brian? No. Atlanta. By a lot? Yeah. Okay. Dan? Yep. Atlanta. Won't, won't, won't soak up too much time here. ATL all day. I think Old Glory is going to play him tighter, and I think Atlanta might take this one and rest some players, perhaps. Player management might play into this, and I think Old Glory at home is – they played well in that, that, that second half the last time they were out. If you take out the first period, they actually win that match. Uh, but that's a ridiculous rhetor- uh, hypothetical situation. But I think Old Glory, they may not win, but they're going to play him tight. So if you got if you got a lot of points in those spreads, ladies and gentlemen, take Old Glory. On, and it's got nothing to do with the happy feelings that I have about Old Glory because I drive around in a brand new Volkswagen Taos from Sheehy Auto Store. It's got nothing to do with that. A little bit. A little bit. On that note, gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time, your toil. On behalf of Mr. Dan Power, Brian Ray, I'm Matt McCarthy. Thank you for tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button. Please sign up for our newsletter and please check out our other segments including the rugby odds and our college rugby wrap-up and sign up for our american red cross blood donor team